One classic way to visualize the relationship between two columns is throughout a scatter plot. A scatter plot represents input data rows as points in a two dimensional chart. This plot is implemented in NIME Analytics Platform with the Scatterplot JavaScript node. In this example, we imported a data set which describes the weather in Austin between 2013 and 2017. We have then used the Scatterplot JavaScript node to build an interactive scatterplot on it. Let's open the Scatterplot view by selecting Execute and Open Views. In this example, we've chosen the average temperature and the average dew point for the X and Y axis respectively. Each data point then shows the average temperature and average dew point for a day in Austin between 2013 and 2017. As a side note, the dew point is the temperature at which the air condenses. Patterns inside a scatter plot intuitively show possible relationships between the two columns. In our case, we can see that the higher the average temperature of the day, the higher the dew point is. We've also added the color as a graphical property for each data point to also include the values of a third column in the visualization. We have used different shades of blue to visualize the humidity level. Dark blue represents a day with high humidity, while light blue a day with low humidity. This view, like all views from the JavaScript-based nodes, is interactive. In fact, if we click on this icon in the top right corner, we can change the settings. For example, we can change the title to Austin Weather Scatter Plot and the subtitle to Interesting Relationship Between Two Columns. We can also change the columns displayed on the X and the Y axis. Indeed, an interactive scatter plot is very useful to explore the different relationships between different columns. For example, if we change the Y column here to sea level pressure average, a different and inverse relationship with the average temperature is found. We can also change the labels for the X and Y axis to make them more straightforward. The wheel of the mouse allows to zoom in and out of the plot. These two icons here, named Pan and Select, determine the mode of interaction with the view. Currently, the Pan mode is enabled. By clicking and dragging, we move around the plot to better explore the data points. If the Select mode is enabled, one or more data points can be selected by clicking on one single point or on multiple points with Ctrl Shift or by drawing a rectangle around them. After the selection is performed, click Apply and Close here to save the selection together with all the other changes made in the view. If we open the output table now, we notice a newly created column called Selected Scatter Plot, where the data rows selected in the scatter plot have acquired a true value. Let's go through the workflow and see how we built such a visualization. We use a Color Manager node to encode the shade of blue representing the humidity level in each row. Then, we use a scatterplot JavaScript node to create the interactive visualization. Let's check the configuration settings of the Color Manager node by double-clicking. Here, the column whose values we want to use for the color property is selected. If we have selected a nominal column, the color settings appear on the left in the form of a discrete map. We can associate a new color to a value by selecting the value and then the color from the color palette below. We can also change the default color palette by clicking Apply to Columns next to the desired palette. Instead, if we have selected a numerical column, the column settings are displayed here on the right in the form of a continuous color scale. We want to define different shades of blue for different values of humidity, so we select the Swatches tab, where we find a grid of different colors sorted by hue and intensity. We then select the minimum value of humidity percentage on the right, then we select a very light blue in the color map at the bottom. Finally, we associate the maximum value of humidity 
with a very dark blue color. We click OK and execute and open the output of this node. In the output table, each row is now associated with a different shade of blue, depending on the value in the humidity average percentage column. The data is now ready to be plotted in a scatter plot, so we feed it into the scatter plot JavaScript node. Let's quickly go through its settings. The configuration window of the scatterplot node has four tabs. The options tab, where we can find the basic graphic settings of the plot. The axis configuration tab, for setting up the axis of the plot. The general plot options tab, for a number of customizations like labels and background color. And the view controls tab, to define the interactivity options. Let's now go through the settings in the options tab. First of all, we define which column should be on which axis. We select average temperature for the x-axis and dew point for the y-axis. This checkbox creates a static image of the plot in SVG format at the output of this node. Remember the result of interactively selecting a few data points in the plot? The corresponding data rows were marked as true in the output column named selected scatter plot. Here, we can change the name of such column. In case missing values are found and we select this checkbox, a warning will be issued during visualization. If this box is not checked, missing and unsupported values will be ignored and no warning will be displayed. Large data tables can result in slow plotting and clutter visualization. So for a smoother visualization and not to overwhelm the user, here we define the maximum number of rows to display in the scatter plot. When using the setting, make sure that the input rows are sorted randomly so that the displayed data sample is representative of the entire data set. Next, we have the Axis Configuration tab. In this tab, we can set the labels for the axis, define the format of the date and time labels, if any, and define the upper and lower bound of each axis as minimum and maximum from the actual column values with this option, auto range axis, lower and upper bound from the input domain metadata called table specification with this option, use domain information. In the general options tab, we can set the title and subtitle in the view, whether to display the color legend and or a grid, the size of the view in pixel along with automatic resize and the full screen button, the background colors here, and whether to display warnings in the plot view. Remember all those interactivity commands? They are all defined in the view controls tab. This option, enable mouse crosshair, displays the vertical and horizontal bars on mouse over. At the bottom of this panel here, there is an option to enable the combined interactivity with the views from other JavaScript-based nodes when in the same wrap meta node. For example, if the checkbox Publish Selection Events is enabled, selecting some data points in this scatter plot automatically selects the same data points in a table view or a parallel coordinates plot if in the same composite view of a wrap meta node. Finally, here, the pan and zoom controls are enabled. In this video, we've shown how to build an interactive view of a scatter plot with color points using a color manager node and a scatter plot JavaScript node. Many JavaScript based nodes share most of the configuration settings and most of the view interactivity options illustrated here. We've used the scatter plot node as a general example of how to create interactive views in NIME Analytics Platform. As a side note, if we include our visualization nodes in a wrap meta node and execute the workflow on a NIME server from the NIME web portal on our preferred web browser, the same interactive data visualization will show as a web page. It's now your turn to apply the settings described in this video in a JavaScript-based node to create your own data visualization.